What is this? Why can't I... I see. What is this unyielding, unending darkness? Is this the cold embrace of death? No, it's a big sea of monochromatic plastic. This is not an Ecopla. This is the Premium Bandai Gundam Dryon 3. Dryon, yeah, it's a dry-ass looking kit. <laughs> Honestly, can't get much worse than this. Wait. No. No. No! Hey, what is up, everyone? Today I'm taking a look at the high grade Gundam Dryon 3. Once again, this right here is a monochromatic box, and I guess a monochromatic Gundam at that, but that does mean that this is a premium Bandai only exclusive, and this is from all the way back in 2015. So you might find this a little hard to find, and if you do, and you want one, I got mine through Bai, and so can you. I'll throw a link down there in the description. So jumping right on into the overview of what comes in this box and with the high grade Dryon 3 itself, we've got that absolutely massive beam sword, two beam sabers, a pair of beam wings, two holding hands for holding onto the weapons, and a bunch of stuff for parts forming this into the transformation into the three elements that make up the Dryon 3. So now jumping into the full 360 spin, and there is the Dryon 3, straight built with just the eye stickers on it, and like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, this is just a sea of black. This almost looks like an Echopla, or an Ecopla, depending on the way you like to say it, and if you don't know what that is, it's one of these. A recycled plastic Gundam, aka a Gundam made out of recycled plastic. It looks like that, at first glance. But we do actually have one other shade of plastic in here, which is a dark grey, but most of the time you can't really tell the difference between them all that much. And I thought that this wouldn't look that great, but honestly, I'm kind of digging it. I haven't used any of the stickers yet, and I will throw a couple on just to see what they look like, but this turned out better than I was expecting. It was a bit of a monotonous build though, because, you know, everything looked the same, but this looks dark. This looks cool and catches the light very nicely. So I stuck on some of the stickers, but as you can see, it's only about half, if not even, and it's made an absolutely huge difference. Of course, stickers are not the most optimal thing you want on your plastic model. You mainly want plastic, but when you want this kind of shiny finish, there really is only stickers or paint, and I guess they didn't want to paint any parts for you. So again, you know, stickers, not great, but there's one thing that's absolutely killing me about this, and that's something that never needed stickers at all, and that is that big old V-fin, if you can even call it a V-fin anymore. If you just take a look at the actual art of the Dryon 3, the entire head crest is meant to be gold, or yellow as it looks there, but the whole thing is meant to be gold. This thing should be completely cast in gold, but what we got was one in black and some stickers for some of it. I'm not sure what they were thinking there. I mean, just cast this little bit in gold plastic and you're done. And the weird thing is, this never came with the try-on, so you can't just put it down to color swapping the kit. They could have made this gold, they just didn't. However, that does mean if you are going to paint the kit yourself, that's going to be super simple to paint in gold. But yeah, in general, when it comes to the looks of the Dryon 3, besides the fact that this is completely in black and has some gold stickers, which kind of go very well with that, black and gold is a very classy combination, there isn't really a whole lot to say. But if you did like what the Tryon 3 did by taking the absolute mass of an awesome mobile suit that is the Double Zeta and giving it a super robot vibe, but didn't particularly like the color scheme, the really primary color on primary color on primary color, extreme kind of look, well this is a lot more subtle and if you do paint the gold segments, you will have yourself a very classy and awesome looking dark super robot. So now jumping into the accessories once again, and there's absolutely everything that comes in here. So in classic build fighter style, we've got a lot of clear effects. So the first of the weapons we have in here is the biggest and the most iconic. This right here is the Kokoku no Chohoken. So basically, it's a giant beam sword with some beam wings. So very similar to what we would have seen if, well, it's exactly the same as what we would have seen with the Tryon 3, except this time it's in black with yellow effects. So to attach this into the hands, we do need to swap out the hands for these holding ones. We've got both a left and a right, so you can hold it in whichever hand, or a combination of both. The hand just pops in in the usual old-fashioned kind of way. And then we just align the slot in this to go the way we want it to go. Pop that into the hand like so. And there we go, that big old massive sword. So the Dryon 3 and the Tryon that it's based on has a lot of ABS in its build, which means the joints are quite strong. So 
Even though this is a big old weapon, it does have the gripping power and the holding power to hold it most of the time. Now, the shoulder joint is a little wonky, it works its way out as it moves, but as long as you push it in properly every now and then, well then the dry on here can hold it most of the time. Of course, joints tend to loosen up over time, so that does mean it may start to droop. It looks like it might wiggle down a little, but still, great job for such a, well, a massive sword. As you'd expect, because this can pretty much almost hold this sword up with one arm, then it's definitely gonna hold it up with two. So we do have two holding hands in here. Only one slot though, one of the hands has to be used as a supplementary holding hand, just to kind of balance it. But you can get that really typical try on or dry on pose out of this. The articulation is a little bit dated, but still, you will manage to eke it out, and there is no denying just how cool this weapon right here is. That is mad. So next up in here, we've got a pair of Hyper Beam Sabers, just like a regular pair of Beam Sabers, but bigger. AKA, these are just standard master grade size beams, but for using with this right here. These attach into the exact same hands that we would have just seen by popping them into that peg, just like so. There is an example of what they look like attached, just like we would have seen with the double Zeta this is based on. These are big, these are awesome, and absolutely, well, massive. Also, impromptu size comparison, because I forgot earlier on, the uh, Tryon or the Dryon, both of which are pretty big mobile suits. Double Zeta sized even, because that's what it is. When these are not in use, you can just pop them out of the hands, and as usual, pop out the beams, and you can store them around in the backpack in these little handy dandy slots that are attached onto the black double cannonades. A pair of back mounted beam cannons. So the last three accessories that we have in here, which we saw a minute ago, these are actually for using in the transformation part, so we'll keep that for later on. Let's move right into the articulation. So now moving into the articulation on the dry on three right here, and the backpack doesn't really do anything while it's a backpack, so I'm just gonna take that off, because it does make it a bit on the back heavy side, as well as kind of get in the way of some of the articulation. So let's move on from the head down. I will mention one aspect about this build first though. This kit does have a lot of classic joints, the worst of which being this kind of shoulder style joint right here, and it's not bad in essence, well, I guess it is actually, and that is because this doesn't hold in. So the more you just turn the arm, just with regular posing and whatnot, it just loosens, 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 and then just kind of works its way out, unlike the ball joints we have in most high grades. This exact same joint is elsewhere on this kit, including right there, and you see, same thing, just a bad joint. This peg in a polycap hole doesn't really work. It's kind of like a weird anal sphincter that's always trying to like squeeze the peg out like some kind of poop. And uh, yeah, anyway, from the head down. The head on the dry on right here is extremely loose. Uh, there it is looking all the way up, all the way down. This isn't a polycap joint, by the way. There it is looking left and right. So it is a little bit blocked all around and super, super duper loose. The shoulder here has a little bit of forward and back and off most of the time. Full 360 spin, this bit of armor can move out of the way, the shield can close up to keep it out of the way, there it is raised all the way up, so that does make it about parallel to the ground, there is where the spin is right there, got a bit of an awkward movement right here at this point, there is the bend at the elbow, so that's as far as it goes, and then we've got a standard ball joint wrist. So now moving down to the torso, and this has nothing going on whatsoever. We have a bit of a waist joint here, which allows this to move forward and back, but it is just a standard ball into a polycap socket. Got a bit of rotation, but there's nothing much to speak of down here. As for the skirting armors, there's the front skirting, can flip up like that. Quite a bit going on at the side skirting because this does have a transformation, so it swings forward and back. This little fin can be moved up and down like so. And you can also flip up the armor like that, so that isn't too bad. The dry on here has no butt flap. We have the dreaded ball joint hip. And the kicks we get out of that is that to the front, which isn't so bad. That out to the back, which is quite good. And ball joints never give you anything out to the outside, just that. And we also lost a piece. Continuing on with the host of build and articulation issues this kit has, it does have some upper leg rotation, but if you try to rotate it, it starts to split this up here, and that's about all you get. With the leg off, this does spin, but when it's attached because of the type of hip, well, it doesn't spin anymore. We've got a classic single point bend at the knee, just about 90 degrees. And on the ground, as for what we get here, there we go all the way to the front. That is nice, that is very, very nice. There it is, out to the back, very good again. And as for the side-to-side -side pivot, we get from there 
to there and that's probably the strongest aspect of this kit. So when it comes to the articulation here, the double zeta that this is based on is very much showing its age. It's not the worst by any margin, but it's definitely not the best. I would say it's about sub-average by today's standards, but it's not a modern kit. So finally on to the transformation into the three different tryons. So basically you disassemble this into different parts, split them into three different piles, depending on what is going to make which one. So we're going to start off with the Riku Tryon, which is the lion kind of one. You just pull off a couple of parts, unfold the legs, fold up the cannons, attach these little bits onto the side again, whip out the tail, and then attach the head on. And there you go. There is your black version of the Riku Tryon, also known as the Riku Dryon. So that was the land, now moving on to the sea, which is the manta ray based one. This uses the torso and arms. We do have to add some parts in now to actually put this together, including the front aspect and the thrusters. We also add the handle of the big old sword onto the back as the tail. So we just move the arms around, flip out the wings, move the shoulders forward, and then reattach those arms onto the new aspect that we've added to the front of the body. And there we go. There is the C aspect of this dryon, which is the Umi dryon. Last up then, moving down to the legs, and we also take some more effect parts, some more big old thrusters, and the eagle kind of head aspect that would have been on the sword. We just move the legs all around, pull off the lower aspects, disassemble them to a certain degree, remove a couple of parts that change the angle of the leg armor. We do have some big old thrusters added onto this then. We reattach the legs on, they're kind of backwards now, and then the head of that eagle attaches on, and that's when we end up with this right here, which is the Sora Dryon. And yeah, with all three of them finally finished, that is it for the review. And anyway, this is a fun kit, as was the Tryon 3, which I actually did build a few years ago, but I thought I had reviewed it, but for some reason or another, maybe work back in Japan, I never got around to it. It was a fun kit, but not perfect by any means. Just like a lot of Build Fighters kits, it's a little held back by the kit that it's based on. That is the 11-year-old Gundam Double Zeta. Something tells me that is a very good kit by how this feels. It's just the way they've attached the new aspects on that brings it down a little bit. The shoulders aren't as good as modern high-grade shoulders are, but for the most part, it's a solid enough kit. When it comes to the aesthetics on this, it is a little bit of a mixed bag. I think the black looks great and the gold on top of the black is really classy. It is a little bit of a disappointment that this is all stickers, so I recommend bringing your own gold paint. It will definitely bring this to the next level. The accessories in here are exactly the same as what we would have seen with the Tryon, which are really fun. That is what this kit is at its core, a whole lot of fun. And that goes with the way this splits up into three different forms. It does a whole lot of stuff okay, so at the end of the day, you've got yourself a fun model kit. I guess at the end of the day, whether or not getting this P Bandai version of the Try On 3 is really worth it to you. Did you love that episode of Gundam Build Fighters Batlog? Do you just love the Try On and want the Dry On as well? Well, if you've tried the standard high grade Try On and love it and just want this one, I say go for it. But if you're just a little bit curious as to whether or not to get this out of the blue, I say there are much better kits out there. And this, to me, is bronze tier. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you so, so much to each and every one of you guys for watching these videos. Without you, this channel would not be possible. And my special thanks to those helping out over on the channel memberships and over on Patreon. So that includes Craig Jerry, Caleb Engelhart, Sean T. Van Fawn, Global Frequency Studios, Lauren Seahack, Joseph Kukluk, Mr. Winter, Forsetti, Joe, and Orgy59061.